Hi there guys, welcome back to another Metal Crusader video. This time I will be continuing to talk about my July order. Like I said, it is a big order. This is part 2. Uh, before starting, let me just uh, explain. Last week I didn't release a video because like I said, I was at the fest, um, eventually ended up going there and it was impossible for me to record due to that. Moving on. The first band I'm going to talk to you about is Bethlehem. In this case, Dictios Tenecare. Let me just show you the insides and the booklet. Although the booklet is really, really basic and simple. It's just... There you go, some lyrics. The release itself has a good quality, um, nothing to complain about, nothing to make it amazing, it's durable, it's good. Um, this band um, hails from Germany, this release is from 1996, back then it was put out by uh, Redstream Inc, right now this was released by Prophecy Records. So, what can I tell you about Bethlehem? Uh, as a band, they are definitely amongst the reasons why nowadays there exists a genre called um, depressive suicidal black metal. Because these guys really... They are the seed of what would become that genre. At least in my personal opinion, they are the seed of that genre because although I find it hard to place them there because of the... Um, quite strong influence of dark metal that they do have. Uh, this release in particular has everything else that would later be known and described as the um, depressive suicidal black metal genre from the typical lyrics which talk about suicide and depression and all that stuff to the um, slower moments in music to the despair present in the vocals. Everything is there. It's just in a more, uh, let's call it, raw form, which, in my opinion, makes this album quite legendary and makes this album the pioneers of something. Because, uh, especially with the Lenferman, I believe... Let me just... I don't want to make the same mistake I did in the previous video pronouncing wrongly the name of the vocalist like a dozen times. Landferman, yes. Landferman um, got into this band uh, for this release and then I believe he's still there. What, and what he brought with him was a type of vocals that I believe split the fans of this band into two. People who hated him and people who loved him. What I mean with this is, go listen to a song, a a a any song on this album, and you will listen to those high-pitched screams. It's almost like if uh, Lenferman was being tortured and is in constant pain. You can feel his despair in his voice. It's just amazing how, how he does that. It's almost uh, theatrical in a certain way. Um, and not only did he um, brought that... But he also, maybe not him, but definitely with his arrival to the band, there were more black metal uh, influences present. Some tremolo peakings, some more, uh, let's call it, obscure riffs. There were definitely, definitely uh, more black metal uh, influence in this release. So... Uh, this release is definitely for fans of Depressive Suicidal Black Metal, and with that being said, I would say that this is for fans of bands like uh, Shining, and bands like um, Forgotten Tomb. As for recommended tracks, I would definitely recommend you to listen to the opener, which I will try to pronounce Schattenhaus der Alexander Welt. This is German, so bear with me. And track number three. Afel Deichwachs Schlang. I can pronounce this, sorry. So, 
One last look. Bethlehem Dictios Tenecare. Moving on. So, we were talking about a band which has some slower moments, which has some less intense moments, but can transmit you the definite feeling of despair. Now, let's talk about Black Witchery. Black Witchery. <laughs> it's almost the extreme opposite, opposite of um, Bethlehem. In the sense that, well, Bethlehem is despair, this is just aggression, it's just violence. It's... They don't care, they just don't care. Let me just show you the LP. Maybe you can't see it from there, but this is actually a red LP. I will try to... No, I believe I won't be able to show you. It needs light to show the redness. <laughs> Maybe like this. You might see some uh, some parts where it appears to have some reddish um, colors coloring, but if you own the LP, you will see that this is definitely very dark uh, indeed, but still red uh, LP. It comes with a booklet. This booklet has quite the artwork. Uh, it's quite blasphemous. Let's leave it just there. So, not sure if I'm being able to show you everything. Like, you know, I record with my cell phone and, well, I have a low battery indication covering up about half the screen. Which is always fine. It's always fine. So that's about it. Uh, in the back side, this has this Hills 2. Um, I believe these are somewhat uh, mi a mix of the thank yous and also uh, talking a bit about their influences, not sure. Now, about uh, Black Witchery and about this release. Uh, Black Witchery are a war metal band that hails from uh, Florida, USA. And um, this release was put out in 2010 by Osmos Productions. This LP is also released by Osmos Productions. And let me just... Okay. Black Victory. In particular, this release, Inferno of Sacred Destruction. Black Witchery and also this release, because this is what I, I would call a trait of Black Witchery. It's relentless, uh, doesn't stop, doesn't give you any quarter, it just blasts its way through. Uh, if you stand in its way, you'll be blessed away. It's basically what this record is telling you. Uh, Look, the, if you look to discover, look to discover art. It's that. That is the release. That it's blasphemous. It's intense. It's fierce. It's violent. That's everything that that I can say about this record. It can get uh, monotonous, which some people would definitely be a weakness. Some other people can be a strength. I'm definitely on the second category because that monotony, to me, lets me get into almost a trance state, if you know what I mean. I, I'm almost hypnotized by the, the music itself and it just, it just takes me away. For that reason, I cannot say a particular song is better or worse than the other because they are quite similar, uh, honestly. I do appreciate them, I do enjoy, like I said, the fierce brutality that this band offers. Uh, it, it's just... It's not like the um, typical band where you're looking for musicianship, where you're looking for some sort of virtuoso playing. It's just simple riffs, uh, drums, blasting its way through, and an amazing vocalist uh, 
uh, screaming on top of everything. So that that's it. The Black Witch reads that, this release is that, and it does one hell of a job at being just that. Because many bands try to achieve this level, and in my personal opinion, they, they can't. Because you can say that the band is monotonous, but to be monotonous and at the same time uh, to, for you to be able to appreciate it, it's quite hard. So give them a listen. Uh, maybe some of you will understand what I mean and some of you might like it. If you're into the War My Whole Genre, I'm certain that you already know this band because it's one of the bigs, it's one of the big names within that genre. Uh, and it's definitely for fans of stuff like Blasphemy and Conqueror. Actually, this band almost seems like they aren't out of Florida, they appear to be out of the Ross Bay area, like Blasphemy, for instance. As for uh, recommended tracks, well, on um, LP side A, I would recommend Holocaustic Church Station, which on LP is the first track on side A, and The Inferno of Sacred Destruction, which is on LP2, the track 1 on side B. I say on LP because I know that the CD version as some differences on the track listening. I believe, for instance, that um, Inferno of Sacred Destruction is track number seven, uh, if I'm not mistaken. By the way, this release also has a really cool Conqueror cover. Listen that out if you're into that brutality and that genre. Moving on again. Then, at last but not least, um, I will be talking about one which is definitely one of my favorite releases on this video, which is Cruel Force Rise of Satanic Might. Let me just show you. Really, really cool. I, I really enjoy this, this CD. It, it's, it has that cool old school vibe, if you know what I mean. It takes me instantly back to the 90s. It's a really, really cool release. I know some of you might not appreciate that, but I do. So, whoop. just lyrics, talking about old school releases, they are definitely, definitely trying to emulate that type of release. Uh, so, Cruel Force, Rise of Satanic Might was also released on uh, 2010. This was released by um, Heavy Forces Productions Records, Heavy Forces Records. Uh, this guy is also hailed from Germany, which can explain something about me, because this is a black trash band. And for those of you that do not know me, usually I don't appreciate trash metal that much. Unless uh, it comes from Germany. There's something in that uh, Teutonic vibe, let's call it that, that I do truly appreciate. Uh, and bands like Sodom, Creator, Holy Moses, uh, Contradiction, that type of, that sort of stuff. You, you know what I mean. So, Cruel Force, like I said, a black trash band that hails from Germany. The vocals would clearly put you off the black part because the vocals at some point sound almost as a death metal vocal style, but at the same time, they retain that uh, rawness and that uh, harshness typical of the um, black metal scene. As for the riffs, well, amazing riffs and really cool rhythms from start till end of the record. Uh, this really is what more can I tell you? Um, man, that's about it. That's about it. it because, to be blunt with you, if you like stuff like Venom, Hellhammer, if you like uh, Celtic Frost, if you like Bathory, uh, by the way, really cool Bathory cover in here, if you like that type of music, you will love Cruel Force and you need to listen to Cruel Force. Because it, it's like, um, nowadays we are having that new wave of traditional heavy metal, um, but this is definitely an let's call it the new wave of uh, proto-black metal, <laughs> something like that. So yeah, I know that some of you might understand what I'm trying to say. So, uh, if you get a chance, listen to Cruel Force 
Rise of Satanic Might. Um, for fans of the bands that I mentioned earlier, so let's say Venom and Bathory, for instance. Recommended tracks. Let me just... Uh, Satanic Might, which is track number two. And uh, Victim of Hellfire, which is track number... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, that's about it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Next week, I intend to bring some more releases from this update. Still on July orders. Like I said, it's going to be a long time. Until then, keep your horns up. See you in the next video. If you liked, please share, like, and subscribe. Till next time.